the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 that we're discussing here on the day. Now, the biggest thing right now is the overall range in which you're trading in. As you can see, you come down to these lows of around 15.8 and you've been bouncing back into 16,000, 16, here on NASDAQ. Overall, you look at something like the Dow, and the Dow's clearly been in an uptrend, nonstop making higher highs, currently bull flagging at this high breakout as well. You zoom out to the daily, and you can see that you really are at this breakout point right here. You can also see the chart prime levels highlighted as well, which are trying to mount currently. You go look at the ES, the S&P 500, and you're, you're, you're trying to break out here. You're bull flagging, trying to get going, get back into those hopefully July highs as well. You go to SPY, you're basically already there. You're just about a point off. Cues, you're well above that already. And again, you're trying to mount push over. But what I want to highlight here on the cues, the NASDAQ, right? This chart looks kind of similar. I think you're all going to, you're going to, you're going to see the resemblance here in a second. The flag's a little ugly, but go look at Apple, right? What does Apple look like? Very similar type action, right? Very, very similar to with how you're performing here, right? On that massive level, mounting previous highs, trying to mount. Very, very strong what we're looking at there, okay? So that's what we're seeing kind of across the board. So when we look here and we look at the overall market, there's a few things we have to say. And again, I, I've been saying this, guys, patience, 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 right? You know, I can give you a title of a video and people will jump to conclusions and they'll start to assume everything. But when we look at this range, right? And I even had a message today from someone in Discord, right? They were like, well, Tyler, there hasn't been too much action in Discord. And I'm like, guys, look, I'm not going to BS you guys. If I'm not taking a lot of trades because we're sitting in a tight range back and forth pinballing, I mean... I'm not going to just tell you false things. I'm not going to just post random things. I'm going to post what I'm doing. If I'm being patient, then I'm being patient. There's no BS here on the channel. It's always giving it to you like it is. So you need to understand that. So when we look at this range, we're looking for that breakout. You want to see that. Now across the board, there's a few things that we were looking for when it goes to yields and the dollar. But before we go into that, that's you two things. Consider liking and subscribing. Helps out the channel tremendously. Right now, we do not have any Discord spots available. But if you are interested with the chart prime, you know, getting these indicators are custom buy buys our buying volume down here you can see all throughout the day buyers versus sellers in real time giving you the best viewpoint that's happening here as well as well with all of the levels in here also if you're new to supply and demand things like that this is definitely going to help you and pinpoint these levels right so when you look at this it's 100 going to be a game changer so if you're interested that link for that is down below you're getting like 30 percent off when you use our code and you get our custom scripts on top of that so first thing number one DXY, you're finally seeing a little bit of downside. It's not the greatest, not the best, right? So overnight, we saw continued upside right, uh, right into roughly, uh, I believe about, you know, we saw it kind of roughly this morning into like, you know, 104. You got rejected, pushed down. Came back to the 200 SMA, you're right above it right now. You want to see a close below the 200 SMA. You scroll down, we look at a few other things, right? The two-year yield. Um, overall, pretty weak, still pushing down. Yields across the board, very weak. Two-year, five-year, you're going to see you're at the 200 SMA trying to break down. The 10-year, breaking down, probably going to push the 200 SMA soon. 30-year, pushing down very close as well. Across the board, weak, 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 weak. Oil continue to weaken as well. Okay, so some people got mad when I talked about oil, and they're like, look, if oil demand is weakening, if all these yields are weakening, all this, all of the above, it points to a recession. Well, Again, guys, uh, you know, I hate to be the guy that I'm not going to say that a recession couldn't happen. I'm not going to say that. But, um, you know, I, I, I don't know what we consider this year long retracement from highs down, you know, 40 percent roughly. Right. I don't know what we consider that. You know, you consider this a recession. You don't consider it. Uh, I'm not a doctor. You, you use your deductive reasoning, though. So, again, we still look really good here. You look at the weekly chart as well. Another fantastic weekly candle potentially being put in here trying to break up, trying to get that continuation. So these are things that we like to see. IWM. Now on the day, honestly, I was looking for some downside because the action's just been so back and forth. So for myself in Discord, I posted this. I was like, look, you got that initial break and then you bounced up. And I was like, look, if you get a false, you know, you can't make a higher high here. You can't break out of this overall little downtrend. Then what you're looking for is a breakdown of that 183.8 push back into it and then a push into, you know, hopefully 182 and the 200 SMA, like I mentioned. But ultimately, again, you don't get it. And this is what I keep saying. You're seeing sellers try to step in and there's no continuation. And this has like been one of the ultimate buy signals across the board for the past few weeks and months. And nothing's really changing, right? This is, you know, I'm, again, I, I try to tell you guys exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and what ultimately I'm looking for for buying versus selling. And this has been the going reoccurring theme. So, 
you know, when we look at this, it's getting points to that picture of, man, high possibility. We just continue going up, right? Now, you do have the FOMC meeting tomorrow or Wednesday of next week. And then tomorrow, you know, I was a little bit off. Sorry, I, I knew I was slightly off. I was kind of going crazy yesterday. Again, short video today. Um, we got non-farm payrolls, 830 central, unemployment rate as well, 830 central. Very important, right? So we're going to see how that, you know, comes out, how that works to the market. If you're not following on Twitter, I recommend doing so just to let you know, I'm posting charts, everything like that as well on Twitter. Now, obviously past few days has been kind of slow on Twitter. I'm not going to lie to you, but again, not a lot is happening. I'm not taking a lot of trades. I don't see too many opportunities just based on where we're at. Now, again, I still am holding some of these positions, Amazon, Apple, um, Apple shares, a few other things, but you know, all in all, it's just patience here. You can't rush this. I'm not going to like throw my money at the, you know, potentially into a fire. Uh, I'm being patient, waiting for the breakout. We hold above 16 more here on NASDAQ. Uh, I believe it's go time. We're going to break up. We're going to continue running, right? That's simple as that. But as long as we're operating here on this daily range, you know, there's no reason to get crazy. You know, this is not your, your demand anymore. It's been invalidated, but it's important to see that you're still finding buyers at that level, even though it was invalidated. Okay. And then you're also finding sellers in this range here at 1605. You're basically into 161, 162. Okay. So those are things you have to look for, be able to identify and understand what's happening. ES, you're pushing back in the top of this range. Again, I think it looks very strong. The support here has been very clear. And again, you know, you're pushing back into 4,600. You can't go long at that level. It's been a brick wall. So we're seeing consistency across the board of like where sellers are stepping in, but ultimately you have to be able to recognize, you know, just what's taking place. And you look here too, just look at the volume here. Like look at the, the look at the comparison, right? So you see ES pretty, you know, this is the daily candle strong selling yesterday followed by you know you know the buying power of the same you know to you know just soak all that back up right so it's back and forth i wouldn't say necessarily that one is stronger than the other although i would say the fact that sellers cannot push you down when you know buyers aren't doing too much here is very telling uh but again your you know your volume is just matching back and forth here as we go you know throughout this week um and the past two weeks so those are things you got to take into account and you got to be watching for. So when we're moving forward, you got to be paying attention and hopefully seeing a little bit of breakout volume to get us going here. Now, again, let's look, talk about a few names. Now, names that you're going to want to see that are going to help you break out of this, in my opinion, I, I've been saying it, cloud names were like my underdog for like the past month. Now, I think this month coming up, and I still will say it, even though NVIDIA is taking a hit and some of these other semiconductors, I think semiconductors are the dogs. I think those have a lot of potential, and I think they could easily continue running. Now, AVGO just reported earnings, decent beat, did okay, did well. That's what's, you know, decent. Okay. Like at least they're not dropping. That's all you really care about. AMD had their a big uh, event yesterday um, and they are booming. You saw a little initial drop. You know, I personally liked what they said. Very good. Kind of the strongest thing that you've had out of AMD earnings or AMD events, you know, really finally pushing a bullish narrative. If you know anything about what Lisa does, the CEO over there, you know, she is pretty conservative. So when she gets bullish on the company, uh, you better believe it. And investors definitely do as well. If there's anything I can say about in going into tomorrow, we want to see the DXY hold below the 200 SMA going into the Fed meeting. If the Fed meeting goes well, which I believe it will, the pause will still be on the board. I do believe, you know, the next step is cuts, but that's going to be, you know, the soonest is next summer. Uh, but again, we're looking at this. I, I do believe the DXY will get hammered towards the downside. You know, this makes sense though with how this is moving. You shot down, you're getting a retrace and hopefully pushing back down. Okay, these are all things you're looking for and wanting to see. I think Microsoft also a very good buying opportunity over 373 really is the level you want to get back above. The level you don't want to break is 367. You break 367 and you're probably coming down quick into 360 and then possibly into around 350 down here as well. So two levels you're watching, right? So if you get above 373, confirmation at upside, below 367, 366, you're probably getting, you know, some sell side aggressively. Okay. Now, number two, Meta. I think Meta is a good buy here as well. So let's look at Meta really quick. And again, you're finally getting some more names. I'll have some more charts on these tonight as well, or maybe even before this video is released. I don't know. Check out Twitter. Be ready for that. Uh, here on the daily, basically going back into May, clear ascending triangle into these highs of around 327, 330. Uh, I believe Meta wants to run to 354. We had the initial push to 342, uh, but I don't think this is going to be done just yet. This is a level we need to mount above, basically 327, 328. Over 328, I think you have confirmation to the upside as well. Beautiful looking name there. Again, a lot of cloud names, not paying too much attention to those anymore, uh, but there's a few names there still we'll talk about in a few seconds. Amazon looks very good, very bullish, very strong. This is exactly what you want to see. Um, you know, Amazon, uh, you know, consolidating here. It's been doing it for a while since, you know, beginning of November. 
I still think you have a lot of room. I still think you want to continue and, you know, one of the better looking cup and handles that's still kind of out there in play opportunity. Okay. That's what you need to know there. So let's look at a few of these though. Let's, let's take a really quick look at some of these names. Okay. So number one, what are we going to do? Now, let me bring you over here so we can see. Now, this is Options AI. This is the broker that we use here on the channel, and this is the proud sponsor of us, right? You know, we're able to work with them, design things on the site and everything like that as well. It's primarily all around options. So if you're an options trader, definitely check them out. The link is down below. So going into Meta. Now, if I'm looking at Meta, minimum day I'm going for is January. You could go further out if you want to. So if we're looking at January specifically, uh, really quick, you know, I'd be looking for something like the 340s just to give you a visual. They're still only about $7. I'm just going to tell you that. That, my opinion, very affordable. IV is really low, 28% as well. Open interest is decently high as well at around 10,000. And you see that 350 calls getting even more with 20,000 open interest as well. So again, buyers like this. They they really expect this to start moving. And you start looking at these expected moves, you go, you know, something like the three-month time frame, and it starts to get nice. You know, you're going going into January, you know, it's it's a good looking name. You, you look like you want to get continuation almost to 350, right? So I like where Meta is going. I like if it can get back above 328. I would like these type of dates for, you know, January 19th. You can go a little bit further out if you want, but they're going to get a little bit more expensive for you just so you know. Okay, so take that into account there. Now, Apple, that ship has sailed. We talked about this a few weeks ago, you know, or a few days ago. You know, that ship is that ship's going, right? So that's a beautiful name of what we're looking at there. Tesla, I'm not super interested. You're still operating in the box. Again, if you want to trade Tesla, I'm going to tell you the trade's been simple. You know, get it 344, 342, or 242, 244, you're pushing back to downside. You go long roughly at 232, 234, back into the level. Ping pong back and forth. It's been a clear box. For confirmation of a real breakout, you want to see 252 being broken and holding above it. So really these previous highs right here on November 29th, that's where you get confirmation of the upside and what you're looking for. Now, a big name that I'm going to be watching right now, pretty aggressive. I'm going to tell you right now, um, Netflix 451, 452 has been holding. It's this level right here as well. You still have that gap to be filled at 507. You still have the range back here in the 480. I think Netflix is a great name. I think they're doing very good things. I like what they're doing with their announcements as well around gaming and growing across the board. So if I'm looking at Netflix again, these are going to be more expensive. I'm going to tell you off rip. I already know there's nothing even to really get too crazy about here. They're going to be expensive. I'm going to tell you. So no matter what you do, yeah, 450s, you can go like to even if you want to go crazy like to 480s. You know, still, you're going to have risk on the board. So be able to understand that, be able to know that, and you know what you're getting yourself into. Even if you go more dated, I'm not going to give an exact position or anything like this. Um, but you know, I still like it. I still like the opportunity. Um, and this is one of those names you can go further out of the money, but you're still going to pay a pretty penny. But you're not going to get destroyed like on some of the other names. But again. Netflix, I, I do believe, you know, you hold this 450 range, tight stops, you have a lot of room to the upside, and they will pay in the long haul and the long run. But again, the biggest thing I want to say over the next basically, you know, day or so, what are you watching for? You know, this is going to be the set the tone in the morning, non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate. After that, it's all about the Fed meeting and what's coming on Wednesday. That's my opinion. If you have any questions, comment down below. Have a good one, traders.